What are my neighbors gonna say? What are they gonna tell my parents when they get home? Are the police gonna get called? My first job in the car business was actually at CarMax. And it was opening day for the Wichita, Kansas CarMax. And nobody understood the concept of no haggle pricing. And it was really strict. They had you do a whole monologue where you'd show the wrecked car in the showroom and say, we'd never sell you this car. And then go through this whole song and dance and people would lose interest and say, well, why is there a wrecked car in your showroom that you fixed? Or would you give me a better deal on this one because it's been wrecked? But, you know, they just, they don't, they didn't understand. I didn't, it took me weeks before I sold a car at CarMax, didn't last there very long, but it gave me enough experience to hop over to a Chevrolet Cadillac BMW dealership. And this was in 2007, and it was at the height of everything. GMAC, which was General Motors Bank, was still going strong before the bankruptcy and all this stuff. They were financing everybody. And actually the first person I ever walked up to, talked to at the dealership, the first up I ever took as a salesman, I sold the truck. It was a 2007 Chevy Silverado, which at the time that was a new body style and everybody wanted it. You had the new 07 Tahoes, the new Escalades. It was a great year for them as well. And he paid full sticker for the truck. He traded in his truck, which they way underbid. They actually held back on the trade. I was learning all these terms, you know. So they, they held about two grand on this trade, which, so they bid, the wholesaler bid a certain amount, and then we hid $2,000 from him to make more money. And I, I'm just along for the ride. I have no idea how all this works. I've just, I've just hooked this guy with, not, he didn't even test drive it. And that meant $10,000 in negative equity on his trade, because it was a, pretty new Chevy pickup. Full sticker on the new Silverado, auto approved, like that. No problem, he was out the door. I made $1,500 my first day there at 19, 20 years old. So I thought this happened every day. So I went to Ultimate Electronics and bought a plasma screen TV, brought it home, put it up. I was like, okay, we'll go make $1,500 tomorrow. And that didn't happen. And I slowly started learning the car business from this other aspect and the cast of characters with this dealership was was nuts. They had two salesmen that were battling it out for the most sales of the month and they hated each other with a passion and every customer was theirs. So we take a customer, they'd say they talked to him once five years ago and try and get half the commission if we sold the car. But one would stay over on the used side. He went to jail for a while because he was scamming elderly people with security systems saying he would, that he would sell them to people and then he would sell you the security system and then you could turn in a government rebate to get all of your money back and there was no government rebate so he he would just sell them security systems and disappear eventually went to jail for a little while for that and then came out and started working at this dealership and he was selling certified pre-owned cadillacs to elderly people for more than what they cost new and just making a killing and then the other guy on the other side had so many sales that he actually had an assistant and she was a well-dressed well-spoken middle-aged gal and this salesman's married and they're having an affair through all this and this assistant is very open with me and telling me about all this and about the same time that I come on they hire another guy who transferred with his wife from the military and he was wild totally wild and he drank every day on the job he had a very tinted out Dodge Charger where he could go in the back and nobody could see what he was doing. And then he started carrying on with this assistant as well. And he was into gunplay, like to help him. He wanted to hold a gun to whoever he was with. And he actually got in trouble because his gun accidentally went off in his home one time and the police were called and, and all that. And these are the people that I'm befriending at 19, 20 years old. And this assistant is also carrying on with the general manager of the dealership. So it's a giant, uh, it's, it's nuts. The owner of the dealership, he was an old man. He would show up for sales meetings on Saturday mornings most of the time, but a lot of times he was just checked out. He'd go to Arizona, fly his plane down. And I recall being in a meeting where we're talking about internet marketing. And he said, well, isn't the internet just a fad? So that's, that's what we were, we were dealing with. We were, it was all radio and television still. 
They were doing those wild commercials. And actually that lead salesman, he had his own dedicated marketing for his own radio commercials and TV. That's how, that's how big he was. This guy, he was selling over 50 cars a month, which in, in Kansas, in a little Wichita, Kansas, that's, that's really good. Basically, he sold more cars than the rest of the sales team combined easily every month. Yeah. And the gal who did the financing was brilliant. She would sell the extended warranty on everything. She was so good at it. And if somebody refused, then she would force them to all take hands together and pray for the car to pray that nothing bad would happen because these people weren't buying the extended warranties and they bow their heads and all this stuff and these people are just doing this and she eventually got fired I think for that as well but yeah it was it was a crazy place it was crazy and so this this guy that started around the same time as me he decided to start sharing his beverage that he made at home with other people and he was able to actually function on this stuff, but everybody else that drank it couldn't hold themselves up. And there was a customer, I remember telling one guy he could not take a customer because he's having to hold himself up by the pillar of the building because he was so hammered. And it was just totally out of control. The, the sales manager actually was really a horrible person as well. He eventually got fired because he texted a picture of his junk to the uh, to the uh, receptionist, a young gal, which that was an early thing. In 2007, there weren't a lot of people texting photos. I mean, it's a common thing nowadays, but it was the first time of me ever hearing of someone doing that. But uh, before all that happened, before everybody got fired, I thought it'd be a good idea to have a party at my parents' house with all of these people while they were out of town. I had moved out at this point, but I was pretty tame in high school and I really never had my big party moment. And this was the first time I really had, had a big, group of friends like this to invite over and it was a total a absolute disaster because my parents have a bar that's fully stocked it was all gone and at some point in the night uh, we couldn't find the the assistant the one that was carrying on with all of the men and I walked out to the patio to try and find her and there was one of the salesmen outside and he was looking at gay porn on the patio and quickly closed his phone and said, oh, you're not, you, I'm not gay. And I was like, okay, that's, that's fine, it's no big deal, it's whatever. And then he asked me if I was gay. He was starting to proposition me and was like, oh. He was actually later fired because he was caught getting serviced in the detail bay by one of the, the car washers. So uh, the assistant is in the backyard doing snow angels in the lawn in the middle of summer just because she thought the grass looked pretty. And then the one that started around the same time as me, the wild guy decided, okay, I'm gonna take her home. She's pretty rough. She got kind of combative, started yelling and screaming, and then started running down the street of this very nice neighborhood, this well-dressed, professional-looking woman, running down the street, screaming bloody murder in the middle of the night with a large black man chasing after her. And I had to chase them down the street, seeing this scene, thinking, what are my neighbors going to say? What are they going to tell my parents when they get home? Are the police going to get called? And that's when I realized, you know, maybe I should go back and finish college because this is probably not the future that, that I, should, I should put myself through. I, I think I should go back and finish college. And I actually did finish college and then opened a car dealership and totally failed at it. But that's neither here nor there.